So we were pretty well established as a company, as a middleware company. And the middleware business, a lot of the people who were originally in the business either got bought out or they were taken over. So now basically Fiorano is the only smaller company left in the business. Mm -hmm. And uh, you got the IBM, Oracle, Microsoft, and, you know, SAP dabbles in the process and they, they claim to do everything. Right? Yeah. Software AG. And uh, then you got the open source guys like Mule, right? Mm -hmm. Who want to now become very close source. But that doesn't quite matter. The point is there's just a handful of players left and they're all quite established. Mm -hmm. Everyone's growing. Our growth rates uh, are 80, 90 percent, almost 100 percent in Africa, Asia. It's just business is exploding and there's very little competition. What we've done is we've established now a lot of times it was just very horizontal, like in, in the US the market is very horizontal. We, we've got government, retail, manufacturing, financial services, telco, everything. Mm -hmm. Now what we've done is over the last three years, or four years, actually since 2011, we've got this partnership with uh, Temenos, this, uh, the banking company, core banking company. And so we're one of the integration partners along with uh, Oracle, Microsoft and IBM. And, um, you know, uh, so we were established in a lot of the big markets in Africa, but they're very uh, popular and in Asia. And with that, we've, we've gotten much more into core banking. We've got projects not only on Temenos, but also on Infosys Finical, on, uh, on Oracle's core banking product, which is bought uh, from an Indian company, mm -hmm. uh, on a bunch of European core banking uh, like Sopra and things like that. Mm -hmm. Right? So core financial services is big. And now the next big thing that's coming uh, on the horizon uh, is PSD2. PSD was originally announced in 2013 and the target date was 2018 but most banks have still really not gotten into it. A lot of it is the regulation, the PSD2 regulation is not yet fully finalized and, and a lot of times banks are not very sophisticated with technology. They claim to be financial services. Banks are actually very conservative. And PSD2 is much more of a business side initiative. So a lot of the value proposition is business. And the concept is very simple. You know, suppose you have three bank accounts and you want to say, send uh, 160 pounds from uh, my HSBC account to EDF. And, and you got, a, let's say, a, a Barclays account. Send uh, 90 pounds from Barclays to, uh, you know, some other utility company. Mm -hmm. Now, the, there is actually no place to check on the status of the transaction. When you go back into your account, you've got to put all these tokens in and everything. And then you check the status. It's, it's from the middle office. There's, banks don't actually have a front office online. Meaning you can't actually log in, see a nice view saying, well, you know, you initiated the transaction three days back. Uh, the bank has actually paid them and here's the notification. And there's no history maintained. PSD2 is like a portal type of solution where you can put all your banking details, let's say three bank accounts. And you can just say, and you put these details into what's called a PISP, Payment Information Service Provider, right? You can just tell them from my HSBC account, pay EDF. So what that will do is because, because they're authorized on your behalf, they will package the transaction, send it to HSBC, and then HSBC is mandated that when that trans and it's all very secure with our technology, it's fully secure. And before sending them the message, HSBC can, can optionally, at your option, do a two factor authentication with you. They can send a message to your mobile phone, say, Is it okay to make the payment? You say, Okay, the payment goes. When the payment is gone, they send a an acknowledgement back to the PISP which has your account details. Mm -hmm. So when you log in, you say, hey, you know, the EDF payment went in on this day and you have a whole history. Mm -hmm. Very convenient. If you've got multiple bank accounts, it's very convenient and no one does it. We've already got a solution that we built up around our very uh, mature technology. So the technology is already very secure, gets the job done and we've got all the screens all built up. One of the reasons why banks are not adopting this is that they've got to hire a whole bunch of services like Accenture or someone who are going to charge them millions of pounds to build it from scratch.
So with Fiorano, you don't have to build it from scratch. The solution is already there, 90%. We just come, we install it. It takes maybe a few weeks to integrate it with your core banking system. Like, you know, the actual transaction. And it's up and running. So it's actually, technically speaking, it's quite a straightforward solution for a, for a middleware company. Mm -hmm. It's a bit exotic for banking managers because the solution involves a third party talking to the bank and they're, they're very concerned about security. Now with the latest security standards like you have OAuth and you have these secure tunnels with significant encryption, you can go up to 256 bit encryption or more depending on what the government allows you to do right uh, so it is really not a problem technically the challenges have been solved the main issue here is to convince the banks that hey you know this act to get them to see a demonstration and explain to them what psd2 actually is mm -hmm. a lot of managers are very shy and you know learning this it's a very straightforward thing it's really like a portal with all your account information and one of the other benefits of psd2 is that you know, you go to a restaurant and you pay with your credit card. Well, 3% of that money the restaurant is losing to the credit card company. Well, now it's down to 1.5% because of competition. Mm -hmm. So, the European regulators did come up with something interesting. They said, well, you know, with PSD2, you give your banking details. Suppose your banking details are already available to your PISP. You might have a card or something like that. You go to the restaurant and give them your card. They just scan your card. And then the payment information provider pays them directly and only takes like half the commission. So the credit card companies get cut out of it. Mm -hmm. Right? This is a very important point. Now you go to Amazon.com. In Amazon.com you put your credit card, right? Instead of putting your credit card details, you put your PISP details. Your name and maybe some password. Amazon contacts your PISP. You've already authorized the PISP pay Amazon and the PISP says pay Amazon 57, 57 pounds for this uh, widget right mm -hmm. and then before the payment happens you get a mobile phone two-factor authentication so it's all very secure this is very doable this is not very complex mm -hmm. I mean the normal problems that we solve as a middleware company over the last 15 years you know software is used by 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 NASA by by some of the top banks, by big telcos. A lot of the companies that provide that just have like a toolkit or essentially what they're saying is, hey, we know PSD2, hire us and we'll build it for you. Because most of the time they're services companies that are doing a lot of billing to bill you a lot of money. So with, in our case, the solution is already pre-built, so the cost is much lower and it's built on the latest technology, API management technology with secure tunneling. This technology has only been available for the last, like, say, three years mm -hmm. with secure tunnels, right? So the screens are already built up for you. You can customize them any way you want. You have the latest core technology. So it's overall, it is much more reasonably priced. It is... Uh, more secure based on better technology and gets you to market faster. It's not as complex as an Accenture or an IBM Global Services or KPMG or or uh, uh, some of the really big services companies who make it out to be. Mm -hmm. You see, the whole industry is a bit skewed. Mm -hmm. in, in our industry, the big services consulting companies, they don't have an incentive to cut the cost down. They want to increase the cost by billing a lot. And everyone's got factories of people sitting in India and Bangalore. Mm -hmm. Fiorano has its offices in Bangalore too, but uh, we don't have thousands of engineers billing. You see, we build products. Mm -hmm. So the whole idea is efficiency via the product to use the technology to cut the time down. Uh, Not to just keep billing away and send all the jobs to India, right? On the tech side, I think that technology has developed with the availability of mobile markets and things like that. There is scope for you know something like a snapchat or or applications to have a high volume and then to try to monetize that with advertising but in terms of core technology uh, a lot of movies towards ai that's good those valuations are not super high it's not as if um, it's unreasonable right so there's a lot of scope for technology but what you're seeing here right now in the world is much more of a banking crisis and of course a political crisis mm -hmm. 
And that is bound to happen, and it is going to go to war. It always does. Mm -hmm.